case you missed it, yesterday, Kim Kardashian posts on X, meet my new friend, tagging Tesla, and apparently she was hanging out with Tesla's humanoid robot. Okay, hi. Can you do this? I love you. Oh, you know how to do that? Okay, what should we do? Go running. Let's go for a run. Do you know how to do, oh, you are Hawaiian. Okay. And as I watched Kim Kardashian interacting with, warmly, I might add, Tesla's humanoid robot, posting to her audience of hundreds of millions of people on social media, talk about some free press, free exposure, I was reminded of this very intelligent form of sentient hair gel, who maybe two months ago had this to say. I think, by the way, this was leaked footage from a session with his therapist. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know how it ended up on air, but anyway... Let's see what he had to say. Go around to your neighbors and ask them how many of you would buy a humanoid robot built by Elon Musk? And the answer is zero. Okay. Nobody wants a robot from Elon Musk. Why? Who would trust it? Okay. Okay. Hi. Can you do this? I love you. Oh, you know how to do that? So a nice, slow clap. And now Jim Cramer, who hasn't been featured on this channel for shit a long time, sharing some thoughts on Tesla and possibly even autonomy. Some stories are just too good to be true. And that's how I feel about the possibility of a federal proclamation that leads to a nationwide rollout of fully self-driving cars. Tesla's stock was up again today because we're getting reports that President elect Trump, who was an avowed climate change denier, has cast his lot with Elon Musk to develop national self-driving vehicles. It's pretty clear that Trump doesn't see the need for electric. In fact, he wants to end any subsidies, including tax credits for manufacturing them. However, he did state, I'm going to quote here, I'm for electric cars. I have to be because, you know, Elon endorsed me very strongly, end quote. I just got to take a moment to add some important context here. This was a tongue in cheek comment from Trump. Just to be clear, right? He's a funny guy. I suspect, given Kramer's early comments, Trump is an avowed climate change denier. And the network that this appears on, CNBS, almost exclusively lean left. Shout out to Joe, one of the few exceptions. They may be trying to paint this as almost some kind of corrupt, unfair treatment type of scenario. Well, he endorsed me, therefore, that's not the case. It was a tongue-in-cheek comment. Just want to put that out there in case Jim's trying to suggest something here, possibly part of the narrative that he, his overlords demand, which is orange man bad. A little transactional for me. Look, I'm not, I'm not against owning Tesla. You know that. I just think that this is a bad reason. Elon Musk tells a very compelling story about full self-driving, as well as solar robots, all wrapped up into one stock of a company that happens to make vehicles. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. But the idea that, that the White House can somehow allow self-driving cars everywhere with the stroke of a pen, that's just plain fancy. First, our country simply doesn't work like that. We have state and local governments with tremendous power to block anything. I remember when I was going to be able to take a self-driving taxi from downtown Phoenix to Glendale, the home of the Arizona Cardinals a couple of years ago for the Super Bowl. It seems so simple, except Glendale didn't allow self-driving vehicles. I was incredulous, but the municipal government of Glendale was able to block us. Second, you might think it's natural for Trump to just declare the federal interstate highway system its self-driving zone. But you know what? That's meaningless, too. Think about it. How do you get on the interstate highway system other than a few municipalities that may be designated on some map someday? It's catch as catch can. The feds can't control state or local self-driving laws. If they try it, those municipalities will sue the Federal Highway Administration and they're going to win. OK, well, I mean, there we have it, folks. Jim Cramer just predicted who will win. Wait, what's this? What are we looking at here? This is a post on X from October. 12th, Jim Cramer predicts Kamala Harris will win the presidential election. Quote, I don't see how he, Trump, wins. Meanwhile, some guy with three first names posted a final election prediction. Trump wins by a landslide. Nailed it. Wins a popular vote. Nailed it. Wins all swing states. Nailed it. And it's a crushing, overwhelming victory. Nailed it. Anyway, this slight detour has absolutely nothing to do with Jim Cramer's prediction that the states will win. I don't even know why I mentioned it. There was another time in this country when a president might have been able to do something about this. In the 1950s, President Eisenhower planned and executed the interstate highway system, but he did that for national defense reasons. In those days, we had a cold war with the Soviet Union as an overarching imperative in our nation. 
which made the Interstate Highway Act a much easier sell. Well, I wasn't expecting it to be this funny. Then again, it is CNBS. Anyone want to guess who Kramer voted for? So first of all, taking a swipe at Trump's tongue-in-cheek comment about having to support Tesla now because of the endorsement. I mean, God damn it. Jim's a smart guy. He Surely he actually knows that was tongue-in-cheek, right? But he's just trying to paint orange man bad as orange man bad. Then all this bullshit, oh, it's not going to be able to happen, blah, 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 blah. Then he goes on to point out a historical precedent where something like this was able to get pushed through. And he points out, well, you know, Cold War, national security issue. Why is it a national security issue? Because people might die. Hello? Uh, wait, you know what else? Dies people in cars when they crash. And if you carve out just the chunk of people who are dead, permanently injured or disabled in preventable human error caused accidents just in the United States alone, when the safety profile of autonomous vehicles proven through mountains of data, can show X, Y, Z, lives saved, permanent injuries and disabilities prevented. No one is standing in the way of that. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I think this guy owned Ford stock or something. I'm, I'm not saying that he does. I'm just, you know, like, why else? This is a weird thing to say. Right, in the US alone, in a typical year, give or take 40, 45,000 people die in accidents. Almost all of them preventable. Almost all of them caused by human error. It's like 100 people per day. A few people per hour dying just in the United States. Probably at least 10 times as many severe injuries and permanent disabilities. Who in their right mind would stand in the way of the deployment of demonstrably safer autonomous vehicles? What is Jim smoking? Still, I like the concept that, that there's what Barclays calls an Elon premium. To me, Tesla deserves the premium. Musk has no doubt influenced the president-elect to scrap the $7,500 clean vehicle credit, which will make it much harder for legacy automakers to ever compete with Tesla. So, fact check. False. Musk is on the record, going back a number of years, saying this tax credit should be scrapped. Before Trump had even announced he was running, let alone began campaigning for 2024, let alone being endorsed by Elon. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Elon is on the record going back multiple years saying that the tax credit should be scrapped. Subsidies for the fossil fuel industry also scrapped. The way that Jim's presenting this, it's as if Elon's like, well, you know what, uh, this will fuck our competitors really hard if we get rid of the tax credit now that we're buddies, Trump, so let's get rid of it so fuck our competitors. Don't get me wrong. If it goes away, Tesla's so-called competition is fucked, and it should go away. But this is not a new idea that Musk has come up with that he's suddenly now hanging out with Trump at UFC, therefore you can ask for favours. He's on the record going back years saying that this thing should go away. Kramer's math ain't mathing here. We're going to hear from Ford and GM CFO at a conference on Wednesday, and we'll learn how their electric divisions can handle the end of those tax credits. I believe GM can handle it, but Ford, well, they may be stuck in neutral waiting for the warranty issues to dissipate if they ever can. In the end, while I don't buy the national self-driving mandate, I think nothing truly doles the case for owning Tesla. The must premium will work its magic in other ways, perhaps favorable municipalities and Tesla rentals next to federal highways. No matter what, though, always remember that Tesla's a tech company. The others are automakers and a tech company can get an insanely high price journeys multiple with no one blinking so much as an eye about it. At least Kramer is correctly identifying Tesla as a technology company, although AI would be a little bit more accurate. So just to recap, the world, according to Jim Kramer, on CNBS, who lean heavily to the left. Trump's corrupt. Elon's self-interested. A federal framework for the approval of autonomous vehicles won't actually make any difference whatsoever because the states will just block it. It's not like this is a major situation where tens of thousands of people die every year, so it's not like they can kick the door and say, fuck off, leave us alone. This needs to happen. Elon has miraculously suddenly now become best friends with Trump and therefore instantaneously, after the fact, decided that the EV tax credit should go away. And if you happen to see evidence of Musk saying this for years. You must have imagined it. It must be misinformation. But that said, Tesla's a tech company and the stock's great and you should probably own it anyway. I think that's the gist of what he had to say. What a mixed bag. And before I wrap up today, I just wanted to remind everybody, Tesla stock currently $346 per share market cap, almost $1.1 trillion over the past 12 months, up nearly 50%. And since a closing price in April of $142 per share, up nearly 150%, more than $200 per share gained since April 2024. Wait, did somebody say April 2024? What's this? What are we looking at on screen now? Number of Tesla shares held in <laughs> some ETFs, including the fund managed by the guy who said, who would buy a bot from Elon Musk? Who would trust that guy? No one. Uh, let me see here. I just want to, so which one is the the sentient hair gel. Oh, the orange is the sentient hair gel. Okay. So, oh, I see. 
The money, the fund managed by the guy in the suit with severe TDS and EDS, held just over 8,000 shares of Tesla stock mid-2023, sold that position down to less than 1,000 shares of Tesla stock in, oh, what do you know, April 2024. Wait, April 2024. Oh, right. Yeah, congratulations, you fucking idiot. Now, some of you might think, Stephen, come on, you're being a little bit harsh. It's true. The reason is because this fuckwit was in the media lying. He called Elon Musk a white supremacist, anti-Semite. These types of comments saying who would trust the guy, attacking the guy's character, his fair game. He fucked around and he found out. What an absolute moron. Why would anybody trust him to manage their money? And by the way, I actually know the answer to that. If you too have severe Trump derangement syndrome and therefore severe Elon derangement syndrome because Orange Man bad and since Elon supported Orange Man bad, that means Elon bad, therefore Elon bad. He's the perfect guy to obliterate your capital. In fact, there was a great comment on this video I posted on X earlier. Ah, here we go, this one. Ross is taking his, by the way, you've got to be watching this, fiduciary duty very seriously. Posted by some guy called SMR420. As I posted a 10 out of 10 comment, I wish I thought of it. Oh, wait, what? Now, I don't want to be unfair. So I'm not just going to roast the guy for dumping Tesla stock. Like, fucking hell, dude. I mean, so selling shares like crazy. I mean, the data, I don't have anything past here. In the media saying Elon bad, Elon distracted, blah, 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 blah. Next minute, stock's up over $200 per share. Six months later, not even. But that's not fair because it's an ETF, right? There's a bunch of other shares. It may have massively outperformed the market. And I'm not going to be sneaky and pick a particular time frame, right? That would be unfair. I'm not going to try and paint a false narrative. So let's just go back to day one for the GK ETF and see how it's performed from day one. All time. That's the best approximation we have for performance, right? You can't judge it over two weeks or three months or six months, right? Let's go back to the day it launched. Wonderful. Up 12. Po- oh, that's red. Oh, that's a negative symbol. Oh, that's uh, that's huh. it's down 12.18% since starting. That's all good. But hey, look, maybe maybe the overall markets are down. In that situation, you'd be completely justified for a negative return, right? Because your goal is to just outperform, let's say, the benchmarks, maybe the S&P 500. So if the S&P is down over that same time frame by 20%, then, you know, they've done okay. So the GK ETF launches the 2nd of July, 2021. Okay, so S&P... 500, 433.72 on that same date. Today, up a mere 36.1%. Now, I'm not very good at math here, so maybe you guys can help me out. 36, and then you've got the 12, so that'd be about 48, 49, nearly 50% differential. Underperformed the S&P by roughly 50%. Since launch, I mean, look, I'm not trying, like I said, I'm not trying to be deceptive. Can't go back any further. I am a long-term investor. I mean, I still don't think it's that fair comparing over just a few years, but... I thought the point of paying somebody to manage your money was to outperform, right? Isn't it? I mean, I don't pay anyone to manage my money. I'd rather do it myself. Now, look, in fairness, maybe 10 years from now, the GK ETF, if it still exists, will have massively outperformed the indexes. But as of today, that is awkward. For context, Tesla, 2nd of July, 2021, same date, 226 bucks a share, up nearly 53%. Now, obviously, Tesla's been very volatile. If I'd have been recording this a couple of months ago, Tesla down 35% from that date or worse. Late December, early January, down 50%. But I've been, all I can do is tell you guys from today as I record this how things look. That's got to hurt. And I want to be clear, guys, I'm not roasting Ross for the sake of roasting Ross. I mean, bro, the guy's got such a severe case, probably incurable, it's terminal, of sand in vagitis brought upon by severe TDS and now Elon endorses Orange Man bad, therefore now Elon bad. He's gone. Point of no return. It's over. He's not going to recover. He's got full Sam Harris now, right? It's over. Gone. I'm not roasting him for the sake of roasting him. I'm roasting him to point out what happens when you, as an investor, let your emotions cloud your judgment. Save your emotions for your therapy sessions. (laughs) I don't even know what a therapy session is like. I presume that's where you let it all out. Keep them the fuck out of your investing, okay? Otherwise, you do shit like this and get roasted relentlessly as a lesson in how not to invest, how not to manage money. One final question. Would you trust somebody to manage your money if they can't even manage their emotions? Worth considering. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment.
AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.